So I remember a time back in high school when I had a regular sleep schedule. I followed it every day. I go to bed around 11, 12 o'clock. I woke up at 7 to get ready for school, get dressed, go out. Eventually, there came a time where I would wake up 10 minutes before my alarm would ever go up. So naturally, I stopped using it. For about the first two weeks in college, I needed my alarm clock again. I found that I wanted to sleep later and longer, even though I didn't have class till one. I still followed the same routine. I went to bed between 12 and one instead of 11 and 12, but I eventually I had to have my friends call me so I'd get out of bed and go to chow. <clears throat> even today, I hit the snooze button about four times before I finally crawled out of bed. My research has shown me that I fell into a routine of thinking that eight hours of sleep is what I would need for the rest of my life. While this is not true, it's a common belief for many people. Throughout the speech, I want you to think about a few things. Number one, how much sleep do you think you really need? Number two, how do you feel when you don't get the sleep you want? And number three, what can you do to get the sleep that you really need? Let's start with the problem. But what is the problem? Are we not sleeping enough? Are we sleeping too much? Maybe it's the quality of sleep that we, we're not getting that we really need. I would say that all of those questions can be answered by knowing to one question. How much sleep do we really need? <clears throat> As I said earlier, most believe that the magic eight numbers is the amount that we all need to sleep. It's what we've grown up on through middle school, high school, and everything else. <clears throat> Adam Dutchess uh, wrote an article over how much sleep we really need. He found that the magic eight number to be a little silly to think that we're all the same, because I'm not the same as you, you're not the same as the person to your left, so forth and so on. BBC News uh, wrote an article stating that researchers have found a new gene they call ABCC9. These researchers state that this is the main factor in how long we need to sleep to feel fully rested. They also found this gene in fruit flies, so they started doing experiments on them and found that if they altered the gene, the flies would need to sleep later or longer, depending on how they altered it. <clears throat> now that we know what the problem is, let's look at the causes from not knowing how much sleep the issue with not knowing how much sleep we need is that it can cause two types of sleep disorders, sleep insomnia and sleep deprivation. Sleep insomnia is when a person wants to sleep but can't, no matter how hard they try. According to the staff of Mayo Clinic, symptoms can be anxiety, depression, certain kinds of medication, caffeine, tossing and turning, or fatigue. Deprivation is when a person is deprived of sleep. Examples of this would be studying for finals or having to take care of a sick child. Um, on a side note, it, you want to know that sleep insomnia can cause sleep deprivation, but sleep deprivation cannot cause sleep insomnia. An example of this would be um, taking care of a sick child. You might have you might be deprived of sleep because you have to wake up and you have to take care of the child, but you can still sleep at the drop of a hat. So you can't get the sleep you want, but when you want to sleep, <clears throat> Elizabeth Lake from Andrew Sleep Deprivation states that the effects of sleep deprivation are decreased alertness and focus, mood swings, decreased motivation and energy, and headaches. Now that we know the problem and the causes for not knowing how much sleep we really need, let's look at one simple way to solve this issue. Unfortunately, the solution is not as easy as get more sleep. Because the issue is we don't need we don't know how much sleep we actually need. John Stifferman from Physical Life claims that we overthink things and we want a complex equation so we know that the answer is set in stone. Our answer, however, does not have an equation. It does, however, have a test. The test is easy and anyone can use it. John came up with it himself. <clears throat> and he suggests that you don't do it if you have something in the morning that you have to wake up. The test is as simple as going to sleep as soon as your body feels tired, not before and not after. Don't set your alarm clock for anything so that you'll wake up without having to worry about it. <clears throat> Lastly, you crawl out of bed as soon as you wake up, and you have to resist the urge to go back to sleep. This tells you exactly how much sleep your body needs. You go to bed, and you naturally wake up. You don't wake up to a loud noise, you wake up when you need to. Obviously, you have to use common sense for this test. He hasn't stated 
but if you wake up to loud music because your next door neighbor is playing, obviously you have to try the test on the night. In summary, we have looked at the problem of not knowing how much sleep we need, which would be the magic eight number that we don't, that's not true. We don't need eight hours. Some people need more, some people need less. The causes, or the reason you should care, <clears throat> that would be sleep deprivation and sleep insomnia. And one simple solution, that is we need to find out how much we need. We have to find it out ourselves and not rely on somebody else to know the answer to. A few last remarks would be that this is just one test. There are multiple different tests, so if this isn't the one you like, or if it's not good enough for you, you can go online and you can find other ones. One other test I found was suggesting you don't set your alarm. You go to sleep when you're tired, but you set your alarm, but you set it, if you wake up before it, you set it 15 minutes back until eventually you wake up five, two minutes before.